Okay, okay perfect. Um, so good evening, everyone, and welcome to my presentation. And let me introduce you to Visery, an AI-powered photo enhancer. So my inspiration for this project comes from my love for photos. Um, the most beautiful things are not associated with money. They are memories and moments preserved through photos. And mono, many photos taken end up being discarded because they are simply too blurry. So I thought to myself, why not make an application that can be blurrified and save these photos? So what is Visery? Visery is an AI-powered photo enhancer app used to increase the quality of blurry or distorted images. And in addition, users can also transform their photos using newer filters and turn their photos into artworks. Why Visery? Although Visery is great for simply improving the aesthetics of deblurring that's far from its only use. The blurring images can also be used by intelligent agencies to deblurify satellite images, making these images more useful. And on the same note, Visery can also be used on security footages to deblurify faces, objects, and even buildings. Furthermore, Visery can also be used to deblurify medical images to help identify and diagnose these diseases easier. Now, how does Visery work? Using Visery is an ease. Users can simply upload their own image, choose a deblurifying mode, either light or strong, and the app will return an enhanced image. And then using the newer filters is also just as easy. Users simply upload their own image, choose a recommended style, or even upload their own image as a style image, and the app will return back the user's image, but with a style chosen apply upon. Kind of like an Instagram filter, but of course cooler with AI. So the model that I use for my project to deblurify photos is the SRCNN model, a deep convolutional neural network that takes a low-res image and outputs a corresponding high-res image. Before training the model, I pre-processed the data myself using bicubic interpolation in order to distort these images. For my web application, I decided to use two models to deblurify images. Both models will follow the exact same architecture, with the only difference being the data set used and the data pre-processing. So the first model is trained on images that have been bicubically interpolated by a factor of two. And the data set that I used was the data set originally used in the SRCNN research paper, which consists of only 91 images. And the second model is trained on images that have been bicubically interpolated by a factor of four. And I use a bigger data set with 200 images to obtain better results. Now, the original Div2K dataset actually has 1,000 images, but due to RAM constraints, I was only able to train using 200 images of the Div2K dataset. So I cropped each image into smaller 32 by 32 patches to increase the size of my training dataset. So note that the actual number of images after data preprocessing is much larger. Furthermore, I also had to first convert each image from RGB color channel to YCBC. CR to extract out only the Y color space, which is the luminance color space. This was necessary because we are only training the luminance channel and preserving the original hues of the distorted images. So after pre-processing, the data is trained on a CNN model with three layers, patch extraction and representation, nonlinear mapping, and finally image reconstruction. The first layer will extract overlapping patches from the low-res image and represent each patch as a high-dimensional vector. The second layer then maps each high-dimensional vector onto another high-dimensional vector, with each mapped vector being a representation of a high-res patch. And finally, the reconstruction layer aggregates the above high-res representations together to reconstruct the final image, which is expected to be as close to ground truth image as possible. So for loss metrics, I use the mean square error to compute the loss during training, which is a metric that is very often used in image super resolution problems. However, I wanted to further, further analyze my results. And so for when it came to testing, I use additional loss metrics. Um, so the additional loss metrics that I use to ensure that my predicted images are indeed better than my distorted images are PSNR and SSIM. So PSNR is the peak signal to noise ratio. And as the MSE is used in the denominator of the calculation of PSNR, the lower the MSE, the higher the PSNR. So they have an inverse relationship. A higher PSNR is therefore a better reconstructed image. And finally, I use the SSIM, which is the structural similarity index measure to measure the similarity between the ground truth image and the reconstructed image. A SSIM of one indicates that two images are exactly identical. So we want our reconstructed image to be as close to one as possible. So this is the test of my X2 model. And from the eye, you can clearly see that the right image is improved. And based on the loss metrics, we can see this as well. PN PNSR has went up, MSE has went down, and SSIM is now closer to 1. And the same can also be said about my X4 model. Although the predicted image isn't as close to ground truth as um, you can see here, because this image is a lot more distorted, um, based on the loss metrics, you can see that the image is still better. 
All right. Now I'll be briefly explaining the architecture of Visory's second application, which are neural filters. For this, I use neural transfer using the pre-trained model VGG16. So we can use the intermediate layers of a pre-trained model like VGG16 in order to extract out the content of the content image and the style of the style image. So our goal is to, re to retain the base image content while applying on the style of the style image. So one of our loss is, of course, the content loss. Now, the, this loss is simply the Euclidean difference between the content representation of our base image and the content representation of our transform image. And in order to extract out the style of the images to perform the style loss, we use the lower levels of the VGG16 model to capture the low level features. We then perform gradient descent from the content image to transform it into an image that matches the style representation of the style image. Now, note that in this model, the weights of our network are not actually being updated with every epoch. Instead, we are only training our input image to minimize the loss content and the style loss. Although this comes with its own perks, such as the user is being able to input any style image and having an output on demand, the downside is the really long waiting time for the output image, which on my CPU takes seven minutes, around five to seven minutes. Um, we can now test out Visory using a live demonstration. So this is the homepage of my application, Visory. And because, as I mentioned before, newer filters um, take a longer longer time to run, I will be demonstrating this first. So here I've laid out some recommended style for the users, such as Candy, Mosaic, Wave, um, just some popular artworks. Uh, my personal favorite is Mosaic, so I'll choose that. But note that you can also upload your own style if you want. And then we will browse our files for an image. Um, today, I'll be demonstrating a picture of Paris. And this will take a little while to run. So meanwhile, I will be um, testing out the deblurifying mode, which is another function of my application. So here you have two modes, light and strong. Um, we can test it on these images. So here's a picture of a man. And as you can see, the original image is quite blurry. And when I use the light deblurifying mode, the image is like sharper, but it's still very pixelated. It's almost as the results you would get if you put this photo into like a a photo editing app and then simply sharpie, sharpify it. But if we change it to the strong mode, because this is a very blurry image, then you can see that the enhanced image is so much better than the original image. And then we can test out more examples. Um, here I have a picture of a pepper. And once again, I'm going to the strong mode. And here you can see the original image is blurry, distorted, blind, or very not clear. But here you can see that the image suddenly looks a lot better and more enhanced. One more. Um, here I'll showcase the light and the strong. So here for the light mode, you can see that the image is a little sharper. However, it still doesn't look super pleasant to the eye. But once I go to strong mode, the image is more smooth, um, it looks better, and overall a better picture to look at. And note that the strong mode is not always a better mode, because sometimes when using the strong mode, you can start seeing the effects of the downside of using MSE as a loss function coming in. So here, the light mode looks really great to me. I can see more of the features of the buildings and the details. But once we go to strong mode, it almost looks a little cartoony. And you can see how sometimes using MSE as a loss function is not ideal. Yeah, this is still running, so I'll go back to my presentation and we can revisit that later. Um, so the model's drawback of my SRCNN model is that first, it's not great on text, although I didn't demo this, but it doesn't really deblurify text, but simply just bolds the text. Although I wouldn't say that the text is worse, it's just not that much improved. It also does not work on extremely blurry images where simply all the details is lost and it's just a bunch of messed up pixels. And it also does not fix colors because as I mentioned before, it was trained on the luminance color channel and hence it won't help with any color distortion or problems. And then for the neural filters, um, the obvious downside is that it's time consuming. So it honestly does not make it super practical for web application. But with more time in the future, I would like to experiment with a feed forward neural network. And that would run a lot faster, taking only two to three seconds to output a photo. But the downside to that is users can't just upload their own image as a style. And also, this model is not great on all styles. If the styles is not super apparent in the style image, then it won't transfer that much. Okay, let's go back and see if it's done. All right, so with the Mosaic, you can see now my Paris picture has a Mosaic filter in it, which is pretty cool. 
And note that the number of epoch I've set for my web application is 20 because I'm running this on my computer, very slow CPU. But I've also experimented running this on GPU. And um, so this is with 4,000 epoch, which took around seven minutes on GPU. And um, I'm using the same image so you guys can see the difference here. And you guys can clearly see that it's a lot more clear how the style is transferred in this image. And on the left, you can see that the Starry Night style looks really good on this image also, one of my personal favorite artworks. And so from my future plans for my project is to experiment with GIFs and videos. I thought if I could do this to photos, why not GIFs and videos? Secondly, I would like to create a feed for neural network to increase the processing time for my web application. Then I'll be experimenting with a larger data set. Um, if you have questions on why my data set was smaller, I'll explain later in the question time, but I don't think I have time for that now. And then four is experiment with more advanced super resolution models such as SRGAN or other GAN models. And I've already started experimenting these future plans. So I would like to showcase it today also. So um, I experimented my SRCNM model on videos. And here you guys can see the results, which looks pretty cool. I'll be pausing the frames just so that you guys can compare the left and right. So the left is the original video. And the right is after I uh, cut out all the frames, put it into my SRCNN model, and then uh, put the frames back together to form the video again. So you can see that the right frame does look a lot better. All right, one more. Yeah, so overall the right video is more pleasant to the eye, sharper colors. Um, I can see all the details of this anime a lot more clearly. Yeah, you can really tell in this frame how better looking the right side is. So yeah, that's the end of my presentation, and now I'll be opening the floor for questions.